Now let's take a look at a general beam example. The beam that we want to solve is this one, which is partially exposed to a constant distributed force, Q. And another portion of it is without any forces. The beam is fixed at this end, let's call this 1. And in our boundary conditions applied to node 2, and there is a free end, node 3. And we can discretize this node into, or these, this beam into two elements, element 1 and element 2. Both of them have the same length, and we can consider constant E and I. So discretizing this beam into its elements will give me element 1 and element 2 with nodes 1 and 2 for element 1 and nodes 2 and 3 for element 2. Again, node 2 is common between the two elements with its forces and displacements and other nodes, nodes 1 and node 3, have their own forces and displacements. So the first thing I want to do is to write the effective nodal forces for both of these elements. Effective nodal force is equal to equivalent nodal forces here and the nodal forces that I'm looking for. However, my element 1, which is here, does not have any equivalent or distributed forces applied to it. So all of these elements or components would be 0. So the effective nodal force vector for element 1 would be basically the same nodal forces for element 1 that I'm looking for or I want to solve for. However, element 2 if I go back to slide 1, has a distributed force applied to it, Q. So I will have the distributed forces shown in here, the equivalent nodal forces actually, from this vector, plus the nodal forces that I want to solve for, F2Y2, M2Z2, F3Y2, and M3Z2. Now I have to put these two vectors together, this one, and this one to get a global effective nodal forces vector. So basically what I do is I say F1Y and M1Z because there is no other force applied there. And here I have F2Y and F2Y2. Sum them together will give me F2Y minus QL2 or QL over 2, which goes over here. Then this one adds up with this one. So M2Z1 plus M2Z2 is equal to M2Z, which is shown here from equilibrium, and minus QL squared over 12 comes here. And then node 3 is not combined between the two elements, so I can just put them there like that. So I will end up with my global effective nodal force vector. Now I have to make the stiffest matrix. I have one element with this stiffest matrices or this stiffest matrix, and I have another element, element 2, with this stiffest matrix. And again, if I divide this into a 4 by 4 and assign numbers to each quarter, Let me write this down, 1, 2, 3, and 4. The fourth quarter of this matrix plus the first square of this matrix make up here, as we have practiced before. So that's why I have 24, which is 12 plus 12, 0, which is uh, minus 6L plus 6L, and then I have 0, which is minus 6L plus 6L, and then I have 8L squared, which is 4L squared plus 4L squared. The rest of the elements uh, or components of this matrix are basically from each matrix that make up those portions. So this part, let me change the color of the pen so I can draw better with blue. That portion of this matrix is basically 
K2, and let me change the color again to green. This portion of the matrix comes from K1. So I have that, and this is the effective or global effective nodal forces and this is the global nodal displacements and this is my 6 by 6 global stiffness matrix again it's 6 by 6 because I have three nodes and two degrees of freedom per node which gives me six by six and again the stiffest matrix is square and it's also symmetric which is essential for a stiffest matrix in our case now if I apply the boundary conditions I know that there is a F1Y and M1Z reaction force at the first uh, end or x equals zero and then I know that I also have to have a f2y at x equals l because of the boundary conditions if I go back to the problem statement here I have to have a f2y and here I have f1y and m1z but here I have nothing, so F3Y is equal to 0, and M3Z is equal to 0, and so M2Z is equal to 0. So if I move to that slide again, that's why M3Z here is 0, or M2Z, and F2Y and M2Y are 0 here. And again, the boundary conditions determine the displacement vectors. So the beam at its fixed end doesn't move in y direction, doesn't have any rotation. And at the middle, or in the middle, doesn't have displacement in the y direction, but it can rotate. So I have three, six unknowns and six equations, a system of equations that I can solve. And this is again the global stiffness matrix. So if I assume these values for my problem, um, Young's modulus of 70 gigapascals, I of 3 times 10 to the minus 4 meter to the 4, L is equal to 4 meters, and Q is 8 kilonewtons per meter, I'll end up with these equa with these values. And I've actually written a MATLAB code to solve for this. Let me go there and show you how it works. So this is the MATLAB code. Let me clear it first. I have defined E to be 70 gigapascals for two elements. So I've picked ones, which gives me a uh, vector, a two by one uh, vector of ones times 10 times to the seven giga, 70 gigapascals. L is four, again, times to a one of two elements. I is three times to the 10 to the minus four. And then here I'm defining, or I'm calculating EI over L cubed. Q is uh, eight kilonewtons per meter. And so I can find the equivalent null of force for such a constant distributed load applied to my beam. And using the function file that I've created or write, written in MATLAB, which I've shown in here, it's a very basic uh, function file that first determines or finds the local coordinate systems or local surface matrices for each of the elements individually and then puts them together in the fashion that we just uh, studied to find the global surface matrix, which is also the total surface matrix for the beam in our example. So basically it finds where those matrices should go and populates the big matrix. 
Having done that, using the known boundary conditions, it solves for the unknown displacements with the known forces. And then uses that to populate the displacement vector here. And we know that F effective, the effective nodal forces, is equal to the stiffest matrix K times the D, which is um, nodal displacements. So what it eventually does is that it subtracts the um, equivalent nodal forces from the effective nodal forces to find F, which is the nodal forces that I'm looking for. And then the rest is uh, basically some creative uh, com uh, coding to draw the beam and do some animation. So if I run, it shows animation and the displacement of the beam. But however, this is not a very accurate model because we only have three nodes. I'm pretty sure that these, along the length of the beam, there is going to be more displacements and rotations, which we're not seeing because we don't have nodes there. And these are the results that ANSYS prints out for me, or MATLAB prints out for me. I have the uh, total surface matrix, the nodal forces, and the nodal displacements, which I have shown in here. So these are the forces and displacements fixed boundary condition at node 1, no displacement in y direction, but I have rotations and displacements in the other nodes, and these are the forces and reactions which um, we have due to the distributed load applied to our beam. 